This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create some photographic style text with part of the image looking like it's coming out of the text using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and we'll get started. The first thing we're going to do in Inkscape is set the view. We'll set the view to custom. We'll make sure we're zoomed in at 100%. And then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu. And then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is import the image I want to use. And I provided a link in the description to this particular image if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial. So how I'm going to import it is I'm just going to um, reduce the size of the Inkscape window. And then I'm going to take the image, this hot air balloons image, and I'm just going to click and drag that into Inkscape and make sure you have Embed checked and go ahead and click OK and I'll maximize this window and here we have our image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually duplicate this image I'm just going to make a duplicate copy right on top of it so I'll just right click that and go to duplicate and you'll see we have two copies of that image there now so uh, what I'll do now is I'm going to, I'm going to create some text I'll, I'll grab the text tool and I'm just going to write text in all caps and the font I'm going to use is called uh, Montserrat, and I'll have a link to that in the description. When you do this, you want to make sure you use a really bold, heavyweight font in order for the image to, sh to show through. If you use a really thin font like that, you, you won't see much of the image and it won't look right. So that's why I recommend using Montserrat for that font. So I'm just going to open up the text editor uh, win uh, window, and I'm going to find that font, Montserrat. Uh, here it is right here Montserrat and I'll make I'll use the heavy I'll click on heavy and then click apply and close out of that and you'll see that's a pretty good that's a pretty good thickness of a font to use so let me go back to the select tool and I'm gonna put this text on top of the image here and I'm gonna hold control and shift and grab this arrow and just pull this out to enlarge this and let me drop the opacity of this in half so I can see the image through it and I'm gonna position this text right about here where the the hot air balloon is will be coming out of the X so I'm actually going to make this a little larger right about there I want the hot air balloon coming out of the letter X but at the same time I want this hot air balloon to be included in the image so what I'll do is I'll right click on this text and go to duplicate and then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on the image and with them both selected I'll go to object clip set and then I'll raise that to the top with this button up here and you can't really see it but what happened was uh, the clip set function took that image and shaped it into the shape of that text so let me undo that and put that back what I want to do now is select the black copy of the text beneath this so I'll hold alt and I'll click on that text and you may not be able to see it on my screen but you'll see the little black lines under there I want to select that text and you'll know you'll have it selected when you see the black stripe in the bottom left hand corner here and I'm going to bring the opacity of that all the way up and I'll turn that white and I'll come over to the stroke paint tab and I'll click the blue button to turn that on I want to give that a, a an outline otherwise known as a stroke and I'm going to make that white under the HSL tab I'll just slide the L column all the way to the right and now you can see a little bit of the white outline coming through I'm going to come over to the stroke style tab and I'm going to make this a lot thicker I'm going to go with 25 and hit enter and then I'll give that a rounded corner a rounded join uh, maybe I'll make that a little smaller. I don't need that that thick. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm just I'm just using this to be an outline around the text. This is not part of the actual um, making the image part of the text part. I'm just using I'm just adding a white outline as a decorative effect. I'm just gonna make that a little smaller. Maybe I'll try 22. All right, that's pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna click off of that to deselect everything. And I want to, with this second copy of the image, I want to grab that part of the hot air balloon right there. So to do that, I'm going to zoom in over this hot air balloon. I'll grab the zoom, uh, the magnifying glass, and just click and drag over that to zoom in. And then I'll grab the Bezier pen, which is right here, or you could press B on the keyboard to grab that. And I'm going to start this point going, I'm going to start this going inside of the letter X, right at the edge of the balloon right here. I'll just click right there. And I'll bring that line up until um, right about here, where it's kind of almost like a corner right there. I'll click on that, and then I'll come up here to this uh, corner and click, and come up here, click, come up there, click, 
and then at this corner, and then at this corner, and then right here. And then I'll bring this line to the right edge of the balloon within the letter X right there and click. And then I'll bring this back to the starting point and connect it back together. And what I'm going to do is just so I can see this line a little better, I'm going to turn that line uh, green. So I'll hold shift and click on the letter green. Actually, no, let me try blue. Hold shift, click blue. Okay, that stands out better. And I'm going to make that stroke uh, a little thinner. I'll go with maybe 0.3. Just like that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You could hold control and roll up and down the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Or you could use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm just going to click and drag these lines and make them take the form of the hot air balloon. Kind of like that. And I'm just going to do this quickly so I don't waste too much time with the tutorial. With this tutorial. Uh, if you want, you could put a little more time into making sure it's cropped out. Um, a, a little more nicer. You click on this node and move that handle. Come over here. And you could press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to pan the page around. I'll take this line and bring that up. Click on that node and grab this handle and pull that out a little bit. We want to make these lines take the shape of the hot air balloon. Do the same thing right here. Move that out. And then finally, we'll do the same thing right here. We'll move that out. Let me take this line, take this handle, pull that out a little bit. And then this handle, I'll move that over a little bit, and pull this out to about here. That's good. And then I'll press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And then we'll go back to the Select tool. And with that shape selected, I'm going to hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the image. And with them both selected, I'll go to Object, Clip, Set. And then I'm going to raise that to the top above that white outline by clicking this button that says Raise Selection to the Top. Just like that. And now um, we're almost done, but we can't quite see the white outline going around the text. So I'm going to put a shadow beneath it. So I'm going to click on that white outline. There we go. You'll know you have it selected when you see down here in the bottom left corner, when you see these two white bars down there. If you don't see that, that means you have this layer selected. You don't want that one selected. So make sure you grab that one. And with that selected, I'll go to Edit and duplicate. And then I'm going to turn that black and then come over to the stroke style, the stroke paint tab and I'll make that black as well by bringing the L column all the way to the left. And then I'm going to send that to the bottom and I'll come up here to the Y axis and I'm just going to press down on that a few times just to move that down a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then we can give that a little bit of a blur. We'll come over to the blur and blur that a little bit. That's a little too much. Maybe uh go with 1.2 and hit enter. Uh, still a little much. Let me try 1.7. All right, that's good enough. So, um, and I'll just drop the opacity of that a little bit so it's not so it's not so um, harsh. And that looks pretty good. And if you want, you could even go to the rectangles tool and just click and drag over that and create a rectangle going over the whole thing. Go back to the Select tool, bring the opacity all the way up, turn that whatever color you'd like. I'll just use red for this example, and then lower that to the bottom and use that as kind of like a backdrop. Or what I did for the thumbnail here is I made that yellow, and I gave that a radial gradient by clicking on, actually no, we go to the Fill tab, and then click on the radial gradient, and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. We'll click on this node up top here, and I'll take this H column and slide that to a little to the left just to give that a bit of a gradient. Then we go back to the select tool and that's pretty much it. That's how you can make some photographic style text using Inkscape. So if you have any questions let me know and as always thank you for watching.